Well, my pit, it started May 24th in 2012. The phone rang and I got the call from my doctor that um, we needed to talk because uh, my pathology report was back and it was cancer. Deep down, you sort of know that that's what they're going to say after you have biopsies and stuff. But um, when he said, you have breast cancer, it kind of knocked the props out from under me. The funny thing was, is I couldn't cry, and I couldn't scream, or I couldn't yell. I just started praying. And I told God, you know me. You know, I can't do this. I can't do it by myself. So it's yours. I'm laying it at the feet of the cross and it's yours to do with what you will. I pray that you will use this for some good, that you'll use me for some good, but all in all, it's in your hands. And then my favorite Bible verse popped into my mind, Jeremiah 29:11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. I clung to that, and as the days went by, and you go through all the tests and appointments and all of that kind of stuff, um, that verse just kept resonating in my mind over and over and over again. And there slowly became a peace that um, was very comforting. I, I knew it was in God's hand, but that didn't mean I wasn't scared. <laughs> A couple of weeks after that initial phone call, um, I'd seen the surgeon, I'd seen an oncologist, and all of a sudden I found myself at the hospital ready for surgery. I was still at peace and calm and I thought maybe it's just a cover-up. Maybe, you know, I'm just trying to protect myself. One of our pastors, Ruthie, came to pray over me. And uh, when she walked in, she came up alongside the bed and bent down and slipped something in my hand. And she re leaned down and said, you probably won't be able to take this with you into surgery, but it'll be here for you when you get out. I opened my hand and it was this cross. It's a cross that they give the confirmation kids. But on it, Ruthie had written Jeremiah 29, 11. Coincidence? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I went into surgery with an unbelievable sense of peace. I never knew that I could experience that kind of peace, especially going into something that I was going into. Afterwards, um, I learned that it wasn't just a two or three or four friends that I saw, but a bucket load of friends waited with my husband and my daughter through the entire five hour long surgery and waiting room. And we've talked about it since and said, you know, if you really ever wonder what a church family looks like, you should have been in that waiting room because everyone there had the same father. I can sit here and look you straight in the eye and tell you that after 18 chemotherapies and six surgeries, I wouldn't trade having cancer for anything. I saw Jesus in the eyes of every single person that took care of me. I saw Jesus in my friends, my family, and in a way, my faith was deepened and strengthened in a way that it never would have been before. Even though the saying goes, cancer sucks, um, I wouldn't trade it. I look at life differently now. Uh, things don't upset me like they used to. I'm far more patient than I used to be, <laughs> which everybody's glad of. Um, <laughs> and uh, even I don't know, just driving in the car or walking outside, the way I look at things now, the 
you know, the sky looks bluer, the, the grass is greener, the leaves, the flowers are prettier. Everything is just, um, it's just brighter. And, uh, and I think that that's because um, God had plans for me.